focus in on the football. Those banners have now been put away and all fans' eyes directed to the pitch where Liverpool are currently huddling and Atalanta are spread in their formation. We'll have more details on them very, very shortly. The supporters inside Anfield in fine voice. They're expecting a response after the draw against Manchester United that, who knows, may cost the Premier League title. Remember, West Ham versus Bayer Leverkusen live on TalkSport 2, but I'll leave you with your commentators here on TalkSport, the former England striker Dean Ashton and our chief football commentator Sam Matterfix. Well, when it comes to unscripted drama, this week's European action has been so captivating it would sweep the awards at most ceremonies. The thrilling 3-3 draw for Manchester City and Madrid. Arsenal's 2-2 with Bayern Munich kept us on the edge of our seats. But Liverpool will be hoping for more serene progress tonight, Dean Ashton. Absolutely. The manager, Gasparini, said he was looking forward to this atmosphere, to coming to Anfield. The last time they came, there was no fans here. Well, be careful what you wish for. Liverpool can blitz you away here at Anfield. I've seen it too many times. They can, and they're on the attack immediately with Darwin Nunez, who's going to probably play in from the left-hand side. The attack's won Musso's goal away to our left. They're in red this evening. Liverpool all in red, head to toe, against Atalanta in white with very thin black uh, hoop pinstripes through the middle of their jerseys and thick black trim down the side. They are playing with three at the back and they've picked the ball up in midfield and Pasalic is looking to escape early. Canate is going to just move in front of Skamaka and get it back to Kelleher who under pressure does well from the edge of his six-yard box to play it towards the right-hand side and Liverpool weave their way up the field. A long high ball up to Nunez, doesn't quite reach him properly the Uruguayan loses out but then they attack down the left Liverpool instead and it is a fast start to the game Gakpo peels out towards the near touchline then nudges the ball in Phil gets the return from Endo then weaves away from Pasalic feeds Nunez inside the area couldn't get away from the defender and uh, Ruggieri did enough just to put him off and the ball spilt into the arms of Musso away to our left-hand side, and it's Liverpool nil, Atalanta nil, but it's been a, a vibrant start, as it usually is when you get into this stadium. Yeah, and it's a, a terrific bit of play from Gakpo. I really like him as a player. I think he'll be terrific in years to come for Liverpool. The positions he picks up, whether it's from the left or playing as a nine, as he, he did there, just drifting inside, lovely little back foot touch to take him away, crafty reverse pass into Nunez, who I thought needed to do better just needed to get hold of that and size up the situation and he just ran into the defender. Kelleher is the Liverpool goalkeeper, Gomez, Canate, Van Dijk and Simakas the back four, Endo, McAllister and Jones in midfield, Elliot on the right, Gakpo on the left and Nunez through the centre. For Atalanta it's Musso in goal, Hein, Jim City and Daron, Zabacosta and Ruggieri is the wing backs, Pasalic and Edison in midfield, Miners and De Ketela and Skamaka in attack and Atalanta attacking the cop in the first half and uh, the ball is won back by Daron down that left hand side manages to nudge it into Skamaka it might run through to De Ketteler inside the area it does run through on the edge of the six yard box and I think it's smacked over the top by Pasalic from about five yards out it's a golden golden chance well does it take a deflection because they've given a corner here it was a brilliant ball, just flicked over the top. Elliot thought he was fouled, Liverpool stopped defensively. Oh, it's a save. It's a save by the face of Kelleher. It comes off his face and goes behind. It's a massive, massive moment in the tie because Atalanta really should have taken the lead and Pasalic on any other given day really should have scored. Yeah, I mean, he shouldn't have given Kelleher the opportunity to save it. No, but the goalkeeper does exactly what he's trained to do, which is to shift across and dive across with whatever it takes to stop it. Here's the corner, in towards the near post, and it's then headed away by Gakpo, comes back out to the edge of the area, but Liverpool's defensive vulnerability is exposed once again. The ball delivered into the box from the right side by Zabacosta. It's headed away by Van Dijk, and then it breaks upfield. There's a handball there by Daron. Referee has allowed play on because Gakpo has got beyond him, and now he's fed Nunez, who gallops towards the edge of the area, gets inside the box, goes on the outside, then delivers a the ball into the area, which is saved by the goalkeeper. And really, you thought he probably should have chopped back in on his right foot there, Nunez, but he went on the outside instead. And that created a more difficult angle from which to get the shot in. But again, they went from conceding a big chance at one end to creating one at the other Liverpool. I mean, they are the best. They're, they're the best when they're defending a corner. They're the best at then ending up with an attack themselves and a shot on goal. 
they're so so quick and they do gamble at times with players getting forward from their own defensive set plays good ball by Canate into Elliot who's down in the right wing position pulls it back into the area and it comes back to McAllister it's over the bar what an opportunity for Liverpool to take the lead brilliant break down the right hand side Canate sent Harvey Elliott away cut it back to the penalty spot and arriving late was McAllister he opened up his body and opened up his left foot and he drove the ball over the top of the crossbar at the other end Keller has made a a brilliant save from Mario Pasolic, the former Chelsea midfielder who spent five loan spells away from the Stamford Bridge club before settling in Bergamo. And that was a golden chance for him to give Atalanta the lead. And uh, this is a team that have already knocked out the man who is the current favourite to replace Jurgen Klopp as the Liverpool manager. So they can't be taken lightly, Dean. No, they can't. And it was a terrific save from Kelleher. But I tell you what, goalkeepers work so hard on those situations where it's flashed across to the opposite side. They have to turn, move across their goal and spread themselves. But why then don't forwards and attacking players realise this? Why do they not spend time speaking to goalkeepers to realise this is what they're working on? I saw it last night um, at Portman Road when Keeper Moore putting it in the area that the goalkeepers work on. If that's then low... Kelleher doesn't save it it's these big moments in big games another miss for Liverpool as well great cutback from Elliot to uh, to McAllister who's been so so good in the last two months and just put it over with his left foot nil nil somehow at Anfield and we've played just over six minutes on talks but Liverpool not been breezing through matches recently falling behind is something that happens with such regularity for them. It, it is frightening. They should be behind here, but they're not. Manchester United 2-1 up late on in their game on Sunday. They had a couple of shots off Sheffield United in early last Thursday when we were here. That kicked them into gear. And then the previous Sunday, they went behind to Brighton. Even Luton scored here first. Here's Elliot over on the far side, swirling the ball back out towards the left edge of the penalty areas. Liverpool come on the attack with Simakas, who bends the ball over the goalkeeper's head. And then it just curled away from the far post and went out for a goal kick away to our left-hand side and Simakas who's never scored a goal in regular time for Liverpool did score the winning penalty in the FA Cup final but in terms of in open play he hasn't scored a goal for six years he was playing for Willem Tway <laughs> the last time he scored a goal <laughs> only Gomez has been on a longer streak <laughs> than that um, but it was a really disappointing cross great position great ball over the over the opposite side from Elliot to Simakas and he gets his head up and yes it was close to going in from the cross but I looked at Gakpo I looked at Nunez neither one of them said anything that's I think at times that's where you need to turn and say to your your teammate that needs to be better is that what something that comes with the experience as well though that uh, that confidence to turn around and demand more from those around you yeah I, I, I don't think there's many players as Liverpool win it back Gakpo tries to take it away from Pasalic and then helps it forward actually they should have brought the ball back for a free kick and the referee does that and congratulations to him Turkey's Halil Umat Mele who uh, tonight is taking charge of this Europa League quarter final first leg brings the ball back after Gakpo was clearly fouled and then couldn't get up and release the ball where he wanted it to go so it is a free kick to Liverpool a good 13 yards outside the penalty area wide on the right hand side it's a milky grey light blue sky as the sun sets in Merseyside the floodlights on the pitch looking lush and green and Jurgen Klopp standing as he always does in his baseball cap on the perimeter of his technical area watching as Liverpool go up in formation to attack the goal in front of the Anfield Road stand where those blue shirted Atalanta fans are it's a delivered ball by uh, McAllister in towards the far post Gakpo's header goes up in the air and it's easily grabbed by Musso and it will be cleared away by Atalanta eight and a half gone on Talk Sport and Atalanta who won on their last visit to Anfield four years ago behind closed doors as Dean was saying know that repeating that feat will be a harder task tonight Liverpool have made pretty much smooth progress throughout the Europa League journey so far and the winners of tonight's game will play Benfica or Marseille in the semi-final well, I said the winner of tonight's game the winner over two leg of this evening's tie 
Uh, there are no goals in the Europa League so far, nothing in the Europa Conference League, anything changes. We'll be back with Abigail Davis over on TalkSport 2 tonight. Remember, West Ham are in action. They're coming forward, Atalanta here. The ball played down the right-hand side, and Kopmeiners is trying to get in behind Virgil van Dijk, who just sticks with him and allows him to slide out of play, and the two countrymen collide the ball goes behind it's a goal kick which Liverpool immediately take there wasn't even a pause for breath there Dean they want to get things moving quickly yeah it's the big strength of their side is being able to to just cut through teams when they're disorganised and when they're not ready for it I think that's one of the reasons why we've seen especially in the last 18 months or so such an increase in the number of muscle injuries that we've had the, the fact that the play doesn't stop at all it almost immediately restarts as soon as it goes out of play yeah I think it makes a, a great point but also what's required now of players you know where I say I used to be able to get through a good 10 minutes of doing absolutely nothing <laughs> <laughs> not anymore here is Gakpo uh, trying to nudge the ball forward to Nunez it's uh, away by the centre half Isaac Hein and out towards the far side uh, it's uh, collected eventually uh, by Elliot over on the far side and then sent back towards the left and it's just missed by Simicast who has to scurry back to the halfway line play it back in field before Edison gets in front of Gakpo and forces Liverpool back towards the edge of their own penalty area away to our right hand side Ooh. and then there's a bit of pressure from De Kettler on uh, Kelleher who shows some nifty footwork to get out of a tight situation there is a foul on Simicast which the, eventually the referee will call back and give a set piece for, for Liverpool 4 and we've played 11 minutes and it remains Liverpool nil, Atalanta nil. live on talk sport your hamstring's not up to the intensity of the modern game is that what you're saying? absolutely <laughs> <laughs> absolutely there used to be a thing called a breather <laughs> <laughs> yes we don't get those anymore it's, you know, and actually it sounds like we're sort of joking about it really no, but oh, even technically we're being totally serious Absolutely. because I do uh, when I do the TV commentary the, uh, the, the the directors the match directors struggle to get in the replays in between the restarts yeah. Yeah. it's very very difficult for them to do that now because they can't take a risk of, of, of uh, allowing a replay to be going out once the ball goes back in play because people play so short and out from the back so often that it, obviously chances get created yeah, yeah. here is uh, Coop Miners coming forward for Atalanta plays it out to the wide right into Ruggieri cut back towards Coop Miners again by De Ketteler. why didn't he turn and try and swivel that into the goal it was open inside the penalty area it's cleared away here's Skimaka played in by Coop Miners from the number 10 position right down the middle of the 18 yard box and then he sort of miscontrols it and gives it back to Kelleher there's a couple of half chances there offside flag is up against uh, Nunez but going back to the Atalanta attack they were wide open the before at the back. More than half chances these. You're absolutely right. Why does De Ketele not just take this on himself? He's very, very clever, I have to say. And it is a lovely Cruyff cutback towards Coop Miners. But really, he's stood on the six-yard line. All he has to do is change the position of his body, swivel and shoot towards goal. Instead, he's already thinking of the clever little bit of play and he's taking it off Van Dijk here. Yeah, Van Dijk has just been charged down by De Ketele out on this near touchline by the corner flag attacking the goal away to our right helped out now by Zappa Costa once of Chelsea gets it onto his right foot bends the ball into the box it's away by Canate picked up by Edison in the centre of the park and then turned back out towards this near touchline where it's collected by Jim Seaty and then sent down this near touchline there's a foul there by Simicas. it's going to be a free kick on De Ketela just a couple of yards in from the touchline wide on the right Liverpool nil Atalanta nil 13 minutes gone but Liverpool certainly haven't had everything their own way from a side they've actually gone through a bit of a spot of bother recently six in Serie A they've won just two of their last nine games and lost the last two but it wasn't long ago that they were dismantling Scudetto winners Napoli free kick which will be taken on this near touchline by Kupminers and he will uh, swing it in left footed I think towards the penalty spot and uh, Isaac Hine is up from the back passage in there as well the ball's delivered towards the far post but it's too heavy 
And it goes into the cop rather harmlessly. So we'll go off to the game at Villa Park where there's been an early goal for Talk Sports' Ali Abigail Davis. There has indeed from an outswinging corner on the right-hand side. Ollie Watkins was there to meet it, to head the ball downwards into the back of the net. It's his third opportunity in quick succession. This time he makes no mistake in firing Aston Villa into the lead. It's Villa 1, Lille 0, 14 minutes gone. Now you're listening to uh, Liverpool nil, Atalanta nil on TalkSport in the Europa League, live with Village Hotels. Visit villagehotels.com. Here is Simicast down the left, away by Hein. And then he makes a mess of it and almost gives it to uh, Nunez. And Jim Seaty just puts it out of play on this near side as a result of that. And a bit of a panic and Liverpool have got it back again. Nil-nil, open game. And I think it probably could be argued that Atalanta have had the better chances in the opening 15 minutes of this game. They have, and I like the way they've set up defensively out of possession with both Skamaka and De Ketele just looking to get onto Konate, and especially Van Dijk. I've noticed teams do this more and more where they try and stop it. Oh, Jones, lovely ball into Nunez. Goalkeeper came, didn't know what to do, but he came out well enough to put Nunez off and he shanks the ball well wide of goal and out for a goal kick away to our left. What a delicious ball. Inside left channel, Curtis Jones bending it round the back of the defence, beautifully weighted. Nunez ran onto it. He should have taken it round the goalkeeper and finished it. He didn't. Well, he's got to take it round the goalkeeper or he's got to do that on finish where you just open your body up and just curl it just around the goalkeeper because he's totally committed. He's tried to dink the ball from a straight-on position, which is very, very difficult. It means you have to hit that perfectly with the laces. If you get that on the inside or the outside of your foot, it just spins away and that's exactly what happened. It's a brilliant chance and it's been well and truly wasted by Darwin Nunez. And that was a good opportunity for Darwin Nunez who has got six goals in his last nine games but has missed a hell of a lot of chances in that period as well. Flag is up over on the far side for a collision involving McAllister and Pasolich and uh, it's going to be a freak. It wasn't Pasolich actually, I think it was uh, Ruggieri over on the far side. It's going to be a freak just left of the... Uh, penalty area that Atalanta are defending in front of their supporters away to our left they're taking up half the Anfield road stand the two-tiered Anfield road stand which is completed this season and certainly adds an extra few decibels to the noise inside Anfield which has turned into a very impressive stadium over the course of the last few years this main stand is terrific that Anfield road end is similarly huge as they uh, look to go down the other end now at Atalanta and De Ketela gets towards the byline then crashes into the advertising hoardings Jones is on the escape the ball's going to run here to Gakpo and they immediately run forward and Gakpo's ball down the left channel looking for Nunez is completely the wrong one and it was telegraphed enough for Jim Cedar to step across and get it away but Gakpo's won it back in a left wing position played it just behind Endo does terrifically to hold on to the ball infield to McAllister Endo sweeps it wide into the left wing position and Simicast, Simicast back into Endo once again and Endo keeps things ticking over well and I think he's been an excellent addition actually Wataru Endo Endo who has the ball once again on this near side here is McAllister inside left channel back to the touchline on the chalk of that is the blonde hair of Simicast who has it tied back in a bun up to the lanky long thinly limbed figure of Cody Gakpo who looks to try and play and McAllister who's wrestled to the ground by a combination of Cup Miners and uh, De Ketela and Liverpool have it again on halfway and you mentioned Endo with him back fit again and playing and playing very very well it really has released McAllister hasn't it into a more advanced position where I think he's much more comfortable creative can take it in tight areas under pressure and actually is a goal threat too. I think from a global point of view, if you look at the whole season, that's definitely the case. I saw McAllister here last Thursday night against Sheffield United. He played in Endo's role because Endo wasn't available. And he was terrific. Mm. He was absolutely superb. I think his confidence has gone through the roof because he's been able to play further forward. And as you say, he's contributed with more goals and more assists and just been probably in a more natural position for him. But his overall play and his technical awareness, I think, has grown. And I spoke to Jurgen Klopp about him last Thursday night, and he said to me, that's because from the minute he arrived at the club, he's been desperate to absorb the information that is required to fit into the structure of this team. It's a great quality to have. 
has Lanta had the ball. Nil nil the score. 19 minutes gone on Talk Sports tonight. Talk Sport 2 has West Ham against Bayer Leverkusen. We're keeping you in touch with Aston Villa against Lil, and Aston Villa are already in the lead in that game. The ball is out of play over on the far side, and it's away for a throw in which will be taken by. Joe Gomez is in at right back tonight. There's such a stacked bench for Liverpool. They've got Luis Diaz, Saboshlai, Salah, Jota and Trent Alexander-Arnold all waiting in the wings. It'll be great for Liverpool to get those big name players back towards the end of the season. I know that Jurgen Klopp has talked about Conor Bradley and some of the other youngsters. Gerard Kwanza, one of those, still being part of the first team squad as they go into this pivotal period but having the, the wealth and the breadth of experience on the bench and in the squad for these key upcoming games is going to be vital for them as they challenge still on two fronts. Here is uh, the ball with Endo infield towards uh, Nunez. Back to Jones. They've already won the League Cup. Can they win two more titles? It's possible. Gomez feels he was fouled by the retreating Pasalic and on the edge of the centre circle the referee is going to give a free kick for Liverpool who were threatening to go up the other end again. Yeah and they're just doing everything so so quickly every single free kick is just planted down on the floor and popped away and just allowing then players like Elliot and Gakpo just to drift into really really good positions where there's just Pasalic who will drift out of that defensive midfield role so it just leaves Edison on his own. Yeah, I've noticed actually that uh, as the game has gone on, Derone has just sort of started to follow Harvey Elliott around a little bit more rather than be sort of stationed as the left centre half. He's just sort of drifted in with Elliott when Elliott's come in to pick the ball up because he likes to get involved in the play. But uh, Derone wants to make sure that he's not allowed to get on the ball and try and dictate from that wide area. It's 21 minutes on the clock, Liverpool nil, Atalanta nil. You're listening to Talk Sport. And it's a throw into Liverpool down in front of us, away to our uh, right on their left as they look at it, halfway inside their own half of the field. It's tossed in towards Gakpo as his shirt pulled by Isaac Hine, and it's going to be a uh, free kick just short of the halfway line. It might well be our first yellow card. It's certainly going to be a talking to at least by ha uh, for Hine from the uh, Turkish referee. It's a bit cynical that, wasn't it? Slightly, but I think. Not enough necessarily for a... It wasn't an immediate counter-attack for Cody Gakpo. But you mentioned that with Darun going in with Harvey Elliott. Well, Hein is doing the same with Nunez. And also Jim City is doing the same sometimes on, on Jones also. So they're obviously being brave in the way that they're defending. Because if you get that wrong, if one player doesn't quite do it right and then cover on the in behind you're in big trouble here come Liverpool down the left hand side the ball played to Simakas the Greek he's not going to reach that it's a little bit too heavy and it's going to go out for a throw in the right full mat position AC Milan nil Roma 1 Benfica 1 Marseille nil remember the winners of Benfica Marseille will play the winners of Liverpool and Atalanta in the next round of the competition Leverkusen nil West Ham nil and Aston Villa lead by a goal to nil in the conference league tonight ball out of play on this near side Davide Zappacosta sends it infield. Edison's clearance is inadequate. It's a bit bobbly, doesn't catch it right. It goes straight out of play in front of Gasparini. Decent touch. Decent touch, that, from Gasparini. And he controls it, gives it back, and Liverpool have the throw. Keller just wide of the D. Long, raking ball forward, looking to try and release Gakpo. It's headed away by Hein, and it will be collected by the goalkeeper, on the near side of the penalty area. Liverpool nil, Atalanta nil. Atalanta have had a couple of really good opportunities and Liverpool have had an absolute belting one with Darwin Nunez, which he didn't take. Uh, but yet, we are to see the net rippling. And that is a, a bit of a surprise at Anfield because usually by now we've had one or two goals. Here is uh, Van Dijk playing out of defence up to uh, the left and Simicast then Jones who elevates the ball with beauty out towards the far side and Elliot just watched that over his shoulder but couldn't take it down and skimmed off the greasy, greasy surface and goes out for a throw in over on the far side mm -hmm. remember the weekend is going to be busy we've got uh, championship action for you and Premier League action as we get to the, the business end of the season I've been impressed with uh, Atalanta their approach so far being very proactive without the ball they're not just sitting there um, in a in a deep structure, they're looking to 
push higher up the pitch, try and stop that ball at, at source, stop Van Dijk dictating from the back, which he's so good at. They're, they're a vibrant attacking team and they've been praised for that throughout the course of the season. It's not a game that you would expect to finish nil-nil. They've got good players who are well thought of. Are you, are you, surpri are you, are you surprised the manager hasn't been mentioned more so in, in certain jobs that have been available? Do you know what? Because He's of the way they so play, they are very consistent uh, with Atalanta over the course of the last decade or so. That he is—he's been so long-serving there that I think it'd have to be one hell of a job to tempt him away. And he's at an age where I think he is—he is reveling with the control that he gets and the and the influence he has in Bergamo. But yeah, I mean, look—he's designed a very good team. They play very well. Uh, they're a progressive football team. And, and it's always entertainment. Here is Nunez, who likes to bring a bit of entertainment. He runs towards the edge of the box. He's brought down by Hein, and Hein, I'm afraid, was always expected to get a yellow card at some point. He was walking a tight rope, and now he's just gone over that. And it's going to be a free kick on the left edge of the area. Well, I thought for a second Hein was just going to allow Darwin Nunez to get the other side, because he'd done well. He just stood him up and then rather than trying to play it through him on the floor, he just chipped the ball with his left foot, Nunez, and it got away from the defender. And just at the last second then, he just dangled out his thigh to crash into Nunez. And, and it's a dangerous position, this, for Liverpool. Simakas and McAllister will be looking towards goal, I would expect to. Eight years Gasparini has been in charge of this Atalanta team. He said yesterday it was always a thrill to come to Anfield. They wanted to use the frustration of the weekend's defeat to get the better of Liverpool. And they've got the defending to do here. Simicast is free kick towards the far post. He's aimed towards Van Dijk. He's headed away. Comes back out on the right edge of the area for Elliot, who tries to curl it in towards the far corner. Hits the crossbar. Comes down on the line. The referee looks at his watch to see if the goal decision system goes off. It doesn't. And it's cleared away by Atalanta's defence out towards the far side. A raking right-footed curler to hit the top of the crossbar. Then, I think, hit the inside of the post, came down on the line and was eventually cleared away. Oh, it doesn't get much more unlucky than this, does it? It's just so, so good from Harvey Elliott. Just as he sees the gap, just curls it with his left foot over the top of the goalkeeper, dipping towards that far top corner, kisses the bar, double kisses the post, and out it comes. I mean... If that ends up in the back of the net, it just looks so gorgeous hitting the, the crossbar and the post, but how agonising. Still nil-nil, just about. I'm not entirely sure how it's nil-nil, but it is nil-nil. And uh, Liverpool have had now two very good chances to go with the ones that Atalanta have fashioned as well. Kelleher comes out, stands in between the two Atalanta strikers and sprays the ball to the left where Jones is waiting. He's under pressure from Zappacosta. The ball is... Back to Kelleher once again. He gives it to Jones, who deep lying brings it to the attention of Elliott, who then turns it back to Endo, gives it to McAllister, gets it back to Elliott, who spreads the play to the left, and Gakpo comes in off the touchline, runs into traffic. Daron stops him in his tracks, goes back out to Elliott, who's got it on the left angle of the penalty area now. Nunez is far side. There's no one in the centre at this moment in time. And then Simicast just miscontrols the ball, and it runs out of play on this near side away. For a throw-in to Atalanta, the away side, who are well supported, it must be said. There's a good, what, two, two and a half thousand of them here tonight, maybe a little bit more than that, uh, who uh, have made a very long journey uh, from uh, just west of Milan to the northwest of Liverpool tonight. There was actually a few of them on my train yesterday, coming back from London up to uh, the northwest. They were making a terrific noise outside, I have to say, before the game. <laughs> I think they're like Gasparini. Just want to be here at Anfield and soak up the atmosphere themselves. But I think they'll be pleased with the way their team has acquitted themselves. Albeit Liverpool will probably feel like they should be ahead, especially with Nunez's chance. Well, that was the one. There's always a turnover of players at Atalanta because that's the business model, but it is their fifth European quarter-final, their third in five seasons, their experience at this level. Here is Nunez down the right-hand side, taking on Hein, getting to the byline, producing a cross into the box. It goes past everybody inside the six-yard area, comes back out to Jones, who tries to curl it into the far corner, gets underneath it and bends it over the top of the crossbar and it's out for a goal kick away to our left-hand side. Another good Liverpool attack this time down that right side. Nunez 
he's galloping, getting to the byline, chipping the cross actually beyond everybody who was inside the area, and then it had to be rescued by Jones, who almost rescued it in some fashion. Intelligent run, though, wasn't it, from Nunez? He recognised that the Rhone had gone into midfield with Elliot, so he just spun high into that right-hand side channel that was totally free. And I don't think he really looked. He just clipped that in towards the area, hoping there was someone at the far post, and there wasn't. Jones just made a brilliant run uh, down through the middle of the pitch, looking to uh, try and exploit the gap that would emerged in front of him. And Simakas couldn't pick him out, went wide to the right instead, and the ball ended up going over Elliott's head and out for a throw in to Atalanta over on the far side. Liverpool nil, Atalanta nil. Liverpool second in the Premier League, Atalanta sixth in Serie A. And uh, still nil nil between West Ham and Bayer Leverkusen and Jim Proudfoot. And uh, Ray Houghton giving you the commentary of that on Talk Sport 2 this evening. Well worth uh, switching between the two stations. If you've got the Talk Sport app, that's pretty easy. You just flick left and right and you can hear the commentaries throughout the course of the evening here. And remember, tomorrow night, Leicester in action live on Talk Sport 2. Saturday, we've got live Premier League action at 12.30 and at 3 o'clock. And then the Sunday session will give you updates from all the games that are taking place on Sunday afternoon on Talk Sport. Canate stretching to keep the ball in far side. Doesn't manage to find Darwin Nunez and it trickles outside the perimeter of the playing surface and out for a throw-in away to our left-hand side. Half an hour gone, how would you sum it up? I thought Atalanta started well um, and really should have gone ahead with the couple of opportunities they had. Since then, I think Liverpool have been in control and they've looked far more dangerous and they're actually starting to recognise where that space is when one of the centre-backs is drawn out of their position they're utilising that space then to get players in behind and causing problems and Simicast has just been warned off by the referee because he's gone wiring into a challenge on Jim City no yellow card is forthcoming and it's just going to be a free kick short of the halfway line and Liverpool who've scored more goals than anybody else in the top five European leagues I've also had the ability to bounce back when falling behind, but well, I think they know, and uh, certainly the strikers know, that, that they have to be more clinical than they were against Manchester United at Old Trafford. In fact, in the programme tonight, that is mentioned by Jurgen Klopp, but he also says, you've got to remember, we did well to create those chances. Here's Gakpo trying to create another one. Overhits his pass, though, which he picked up on the halfway line, turned and spun, looking for the runner, Elliot, from the right-hand side of midfield, but he just was too heavy with his delivery, and it evaded the England under-21 man and goes away for a goal kick away to our left. Yeah, it wasn't a difficult pass either. He'd done the right thing with just letting it run across his body and then saw the run from Elliot. He was wide open on the right hand side didn't need to smash it across to him just needed to feed that in and it was over here it's poor from Gakpo Endo who's travelled back towards his own goal will turn and fire the ball upfield from inside the right channel he'll uh, clear it away and then it will come back via the Atalanta midfield Pasalic leading that and then looking for Court Myers Miners who uh, doesn't quite reach it. Liverpool clear it. Goes all the way through to the goalkeeper at the other end. And Musso kicks clear. Canate with a header. Hein with a header. The ball just seesawing between the two back lines at this moment in time. And then Edison just dawdles on it. Got rushed by Gakpo but got his way out of a tight situation. Played it to Pasalic. And then it was played wide to Jim Seti who now emerges down the right-hand side. He's got Zabacosta midway inside Liverpool territory then Edison just dawdled on the ball again and invited a challenge from Jones who takes a quick throw in on the near side releases Gakpo he's got to get the ball out to Elliot on the far side he's declined to do that twice and the advantage is gone but Gomez is now aiming it towards Nunez inside the area it's well dealt with by Hein and then it's cleared away to the halfway line that was a missed opportunity might not be one for Ruggieri over on the far side the Italian now feeding the ball into the Belgium de Ketteler. The youngster tries to twist and turn away from Van Dijk. Van Dijk manages to show his strength and just shield the ball and shield de Ketteler from finding a teammate. Goes out for a throw and down by the corner flag away to our far side. Nil-nil. What a chance that was to get in Elliot and Gakpo declined it. Isn't it interesting though? Just a little insight into the mind of a player having just moments before over overplayed it and heard the groans of... The Anfield crowd, all of a sudden, pretty much exactly the same opportunity arises and he declines to take it. 
I think that just shows Gakpo's not quite there yet, is he, as a as a player and in terms of his stature here at this football club. And Liverpool warming up some substitutes away to our right hand side. So Bosley, Jota and Luis Diaz are going through their paces. It's not a bad uh, selection of replacements, is it, should they require them? Uh, nil nil the score. They've had some good chances so far, not taken them. Atalanta have had one or two great opportunities as well, but it's goalless at this moment in time. Van Dijk stabbing the ball to his right. Canate, good ball into Nunez. Nunez round the corner. Could have played that to McAllister. The Sun to go wide to Elliot instead, then picks it up again. The Uruguayan nudges it to the right, looks for the return. And the ball back to him from McAllister wasn't great. And then Gomez goes charging in on Hind. The ball gets to the edge of the area. There was a uh, an offside flag up against Nunez. It's going to be a free kick just left of that 18-yard box. And it's in possession of Atalanta once again. And Atalanta are much better at home compared with the results on the road. They have lost seven of their last 16 league games, but they have won a couple of big away games in the Europa League on the uh, travels, including in the last round. Alexi Marinchuk, Marinchuk was absolutely superb in the second leg against Sporting, assisting both goals. And he's on the bench tonight. And uh, I mentioned earlier that they played in now three quarterfinals in the last five seasons. But they did lose the last two of those against PSG in the Champions League in 2019-20 and RB Leipzig in the Europa League just two years ago. Here is Kelleher at the heart of the... Liverpool defence really, he's playing in between the centre-backs, he's allowed to take his time before dispatching the, the ball upfield into the path of Nunez, who's beaten in the air by Hein, yeah, eventually is uh, sent back down the left by Liverpool and Gakpo's got it in between two white shirts, he does well to squeeze it to Endo, who's on halfway, Jones back to Van Dijk, Elliot comes short, receives the ball, looks up, wants to play it back out towards Endo, who then decides to go back to his goalkeeper, and Kelleher will allow, be allowed to come out with the ball at his feet, right to the midpoint of his own half, before playing it out to McAllister. McAllister to Canato, then back to McAllister again. It's a good defensive shape by Atalanta, who is stopping Liverpool from moving the ball through them at speed. The best Liverpool chances have come when they've turned the ball over quickly inside their own half and counter-attacked at a rapid pace. But all the while that uh, Atalanta are in their desired shape, Liverpool found it hard to break them down, Dean. Well, because of the, the two forward players just going against Konate and Van Dijk, it means they leave Kelleher to have the ball. But it means if he wants to play out, he's having to play that more risky pass into midfield which needs a bit of work from the, the midfield players just to interchange positions to free themselves up. Well, that's a good flick by Z Zappa Costa down the right to Krupp Miners, and he almost got hold of it. He actually miscontrolled it, and then the offside flag went up against him. I thought that was a bit generous, actually, to be honest. Uh, but it was uh, an exposing of the vulnerabilities that Liverpool do have. Here is Nunez down this left-hand side, tight to the touchline. Again, he was squeezed by Kotmanis and Zaba Costa, and then Gomez was robbed of the ball by Skamaka. McAllister goes across. Skamaka wins it back. There's a foul there by McAllister, and it's going to be a free kick short of the centre circle. There's a little bit of frustration, I think, in the air. This is not the usual situation that Liverpool are finding themselves in where they haven't been able to take one of their chances early in the game 38 minutes gone no but I, I've just seen it so many times with Liverpool <laughs> they can be like this and then all of a sudden in a in a five minute spell the game can be over Zappa Costa down the right hand side bit of space to manoeuvre into plays it to the edge of the area it's into the net from Skamaka who hits it right footed from 10 yards out and converts a chance at last Atalanta have had several opportunities they finally scored one of them and Skamaka has come back to home Liverpool at West Ham he couldn't flourish but with Atalanta he certainly is and the Italian side are ahead at Anfield. It's Liverpool nil, Atalanta one, and it's Gianluca Scamacca who scores. But that's the Achilles heel, isn't it? That gap down the sides of Liverpool. Simakas com totally commits himself. It leaves space for Zabacosta. He just picks out 
Skamaka, he could have picked out two or three actually. And this is terrible, terrible goalkeeping, I'm afraid, from Kelleher. He's barely put a foot wrong really since coming in for Allison, but this is a horrible, horrible mistake. Skamaka doesn't hit it very well actually. Comes off his studs rather than the side of his foot. It bobbles towards Kelleher and it just goes right underneath his body. It's poor goalkeeping and it's a big bonus for Atalanta. Well, Zappa Costa had far too much room down this right-hand side. He picked out Skamaka, and Skamaka got his 12th goal. Now, it may well be that Kelleher should have done better, but defensively, that was poor from Liverpool in the first place. But that's where I, te I think teams do look at getting joy against Liverpool, is when one of the fullbacks is out of position, or commits himself, as Simakas did there and was totally out of the game, that is then when you can try and flood the Liverpool defensive area and that's exactly what Atalanta have done. Uh, this happens far too often, though, to Liverpool, yeah. doesn't it? You know, this is now one clean sheet in their last 13 Anfield games. They've had to come from behind so often this season. Yes, they have done it. They've won 27 points from losing positions this season. But uh, at some stage, that is going to bite you in the backside, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Especially against the absolute best. You know, you'd still have full confidence in Liverpool... Oh, okay. has made a little Ooh. mistake and he's just invited a bit of pressure uh, from Kotman as it was played back to him and he sort of hit him on the knees and his first touch wasn't great but his second one was better and Canate now brings the ball out through the middle of the pitch and Gomez now joins the attack They're down the right side playing the ball onto Harvey Elliott who cuts in left-footed swirls across towards the back post it's too heavy and goes behind and it's out for a goal kick away to our left and the Atalanta fans are going crazy behind the goal but what that does actually Keller taking that risk then when he is able to play it out they then get through that half press from Atalanta and all of a sudden Liverpool look a threat it's risk and reward stuff isn't it and the rewards are high if you do get through that press because so many times already tonight Liverpool slalom their way through that Atalanta defence at relative ease really the issue they've they've had is, is that again when they've got to the edge of the box they haven't really made the right decision or they've had a chance and not converted it it remains 1-0 to Atalanta the goal coming after 38 minutes Gianluca Scamacca's 12th goal of the season only managed 8-27 and for West Ham did score against England in October and I remember Jim Proudfoot was commentating on that game against Italy and he said where was this Scamacca during the West Ham spell and certainly he has become a little bit more of a goal magnet since returning to his homeland yeah, I think David Moyes might have had a little bit to do with that and the way that they play and living up to Antonio's reputation of work takes some doing. He embarrasses a lot of strikers, Antonio, with the work he gets through. What a touch from uh, McAllister from deep inside his own half to release the ball to the right-hand side and then Jones has asked a little bit too much by Harvey Elliott's ball, which was played inside the defender Hine and Jones went cavaliering into the right channel but couldn't win it and Elliot's won it back from Skamaka and now it's with Gomez on halfway Endo turns it back to Canate Liverpool behind here at Anfield as they have been so often this season but you always feel there's a comeback in them now Gatpost has played the ball awry from inside his own half and it hasn't been settled and I think they do feel a little bit ruffled by that goal yeah, absolutely. It does set you back. Of course it does. I think also then all of a sudden Simakas and Gomez just took in for a couple of minutes after that mistake. And again, you know, the odd stray pass doesn't help things within the stadium. It gets on the uh, supporters' nerves when simple passes are just played out of play. Skamaka is big and strong and brutish has just given away a free kick as he went to attack that's a short pass by Endo it's been pinched by Ruggeri and he's now scampering away down the left side for Atalanta towards the byline produces a cross block by McAllister it's out for a corner in front of the cop and again another misplaced pass just unsettled that Liverpool back line and immediately Atalanta pounced caught right in the middle wasn't he Gomez of whether to go and try and intercept or whether just to get back into position he did neither got caught out luckily it wasn't Roberto Carlos on that side and Ruggieri <laughs> didn't quite have that turn of pace did he it was easily dealt with in the end he's not Roberto Carlos but he does love getting up and down and producing crosses into the box he's one of the best crosses of the ball in Serie A here is the corner in towards the near post it's away by McAllister headed out towards the halfway line and then sent back by Darun all the way through 
to Edison. Back out to the right-hand side. The Kettler trying to take it out of the air. Couldn't control it. Rolls off the top of his boot and goes out for a throw-in on this near side. 1-0 to the away side. Atalanta against Liverpool in the quarter-finals of the Europa League. It's the first leg tonight. The second leg next Thursday. And an integral game for uh, Jurgen Klopp and his team as they look to try to win three trophies this season. The League Cup already in the bag. The Premier League certainly still up for being contested. And this trophy as well, which were our big, big favourites for, it must be said. Here is uh, Simikas sliding the ball again. He gives it straight to Pasalic in the middle of the park. And Edison now clips the ball forward. It's a poor ball by him. It's over the top of Kopminer's head and through to the goalkeeper. Now they're encouraged to get forward, Liverpool, at pace as we go into the final minute of the first half, live on TalkSport. Again, they give the ball away cheaply, and Skamaka has managed to squeeze it through to Kopminer's, who's down the left side of the box, gets into the area, pulls it back to the Kettler inside the area, tries to do a little back heel into the path of Pasalic. It didn't quite work out. It took a deflection. It was gobbled up by Kelleher, but the threat is there from Atalanta. Oh, that was so close from De Ketelet. Brilliant, brilliant little bit of improvisation that nearly went through Endo's legs. If it had, it would have been perfect for the strike. It just deflected off Endo's shin and luckily went to safety. But once again, Skamaka just out-muscles Elliot and then gets cut miners away. And you're right, there is that genuine threat when they do win the ball back because of that extra forward player that Gasparini has played tonight. And Liverpool's players want to give Jürgen Klopp the ultimate send-off. It's something that Harvey Elliott addressed yesterday in the press conference. A, s a trophy to sweeten the path. The Europa League win in Dublin would do the trick. That is for sure. Uh, there is a long way to go between now and then. And they are behind. Derone has won it back from Gomez on halfway. And Pasalic is forward again. And look at the space for Cop Miners on the edge of the air. He's gone past the goalkeeper, who actually has got back and put his body on the line and thundered it away with his chest at the vital moment. It's a big save from Kelleher, a vital save on the stroke of half-time. And you just wonder how big a moment that could actually be for Atalanta over the course of these two legs because he's got so much time, Cope Miners, to size this up and he just allows Kelleher to come out, who gets out really quickly and gets out low. I think if that's on the left foot of Cope Miners, I think he probably just takes this out of his feet and finishes. He didn't look comfortable on that right foot and it's a let-off. What a chance on the stroke of half-time. Liverpool unbeaten in 90 minutes in the last 13 matches in all competitions. They haven't lost here for over a year. But that record under threat thanks to the goal scored by Skamaka after 38 minutes. But Atalanta will be pretty cute. They'll know as well as anyone else that they may not escape Anfield like many don't escape Anfield with victory. The Reds' powers of recovery are famous. They need them tonight. Big second half to come live on Talk Sport. It's Liverpool nil. Atalanta won at half time. So Atalanta winners at Anfield behind closed doors in 2021. They have shown no fear here tonight, playing in a third European quarter final in five years. And they have the lead, much to the delight of the travelling Ledea supporters. However, up against one of the undoubted greats of European football, will Liverpool respond and show their class in the second half? It's going to be an important 45 minutes with you very, very shortly. Let's discuss that first period in the company of Dean Aston, the former England striker and I just have to compliment the tactical approach here from Gasparini because at times we see a back three, at times we see a back four, at times a flat back five. Not only has he shored them up defensively, albeit there have been chances for Liverpool, you'd expect that, but there haven't been the raft of chances we've seen in some of their performances so far this season. But what he's also done is provide a threat at the other end, and it's only one. We're saying it's only one because it could easily have been three, given the quality of the chances they've had here tonight. What have you made of, of the leaders so far? Yeah, look, I think you're right. I think the way he's set his team up has been brave because he's saying to his three centre-backs, every single one of you at times has to step out of your position 
and go and follow one of the forward players as they go deep to collect the ball. Now, they are the best team in Serie A at interceptions. And what they've done, because of that strength that they have, is they've looked at this Liverpool side and realised if they can intercept, that there's space. There's mm. always space down the sides of the two Liverpool centre-backs because of the way that Liverpool play and the two full-backs get forward and are allowed to. It leaves that space then in that area. So what they have done, and because he's played an extra forward player, they've then got the quality when they win it back to just pierce through that Liverpool defence. It's a great, great opportunity for Coke Miners at the end. He has, you know, in these sort of games against this sort of opposition, you, you have to score you have to score those opportunities you know I think you need two three goal leads against a, a team like Liverpool and, and that that's just such a glorious chance I tend to agree with you he, he dallied he dithered yeah. over it for so long that Kelleher actually made the save right on the edge of the penalty area he was able to come out so far and really it should have been a one touch and hit most probably but yeah you're right on his right foot he never looked comfortable at all I've got to say it's one of several very very good chances in the game huge chance after just three minutes for Pasalic Kelleher saving with his face he redeemed himself just before half time and right at the start of the game it was a very important save as well didn't know much about it but really Atalanta will be kicking themselves there as well yeah again you know it's a uh, another one of, of four great chances for Atalanta I mean he he does, and the, and the keepers work so hard on this. I've, I've watched them, and, and you've got to be so brave to take that straight in the mush mm. from, from three yards. The power that we hit it with as players. Honestly, it's superb goalkeeping from Kelleher. But it's a massive mistake for the goal. It's a terrible mistake for the goal because Skamaka doesn't connect very well at all. He doesn't get much power on the strike. It comes off his studs. It bobbles towards the goalkeeper. It goes right underneath his body. He dives basically over the ball um, so he'll be really really disappointed that he's allowed that one to get past him but Jurgen Klopp will be worried that the threat that Atalanta pose but at the same time they've created their own chances and should and should have scored but that's because of the space that the fullbacks of Liverpool are leaving in behind because that's where Skamaka's goal came from a 12th of the season five in his last seven games because he was picked out by Zappa Costa who went down the right he also picked out De Ketelaer a little bit earlier on in the game when he, he did a back heel what, five yards out, virtually middle of the goal, and it looked like he just wasn't aware. Virgil van Dijk, I think, had almost scared him off having a shot, but van Dijk had dropped deep onto the line. He hadn't noticed, and actually, if he swiveled on his right foot, it was a brilliant chance. It was. Look, it was a magnificent layoff. I've got, like, mm. the, the, the flick to lay it off to Coke Miners was, was outstanding, but it was the wrong decision. Like you said, he didn't have the awareness to know that the defender had dropped. And he could have just swivelled and, and taken the shot. I think him, him, Cope Miners in particular, I think have been excellent when they've won the ball back. Um, and they've just shown that bravery that not many teams do here at Anfield. Mm. I think it's it's been refreshing to watch. But at the same time, I think Jurgen Klopp will realise that there is there's chances to be had against this Atalanta team, and with who he's got on the bench, he'll he'll. I think very, still be very calm. Well, that's what I was going to say. I'm sure the Liverpool fans screaming at the radio, what about us? Because there were some excellent chances. Probably the best one, although Alexis McAllister side-footed over the bar on just five minutes was a very good opportunity. I think an even better one went to Darwin Nunez, played in by Curtis Jones, and he just went for that scooped lob finish that worked so well when he was set away against Brentford a few games back, and he finished beautifully. This time, didn't catch it at all. No, again, when they come off, they look juicy you know yeah. they're just so so good aren't they but you know when you're looking at percentages of what is more likely to go in well going around the goalkeeper we don't see it enough anymore going around goalkeepers from from forwards N Nunez is rapid yeah he's gonna have the pace to get past the goalkeeper and just took it into an empty net or as Henri used to do so so well is just that last second just opening the body out and flicking it around the opposite side of the the goalkeeper Nunez went for the extravagant and when it doesn't come off then you're likely to take a bit of flack for it. I was going to say look during that first half there was a big round of applause when five players went out to warm up and Sam outlined just what quality Liverpool have on the bench. Salah, Robertson, Jota, Diaz and Zobrislai were down there getting the applause of their fans. Already we're seeing out here on the pitch at Anfield with tracksuit bottoms now taken off 
warm-up going on. Andrew Robertson is there. Dominic Zoboslai is there. And Mo Salah look like they could be introduced at the break. So that would give Liverpool another gear, you'd have to say. Just a bit. Yeah, just a bit. I think <laughs> as well also, I think you can't underestimate what the fullbacks could possibly do. You know, Bradley, Robertson, Trent Alexander-Arnold are, are available as well. You know, Gomez isn't going to get forward the same way. Simakas has been in between, really, of getting forwards and defending. I think what Liverpool do so well usually is those fullbacks push the opposition so far back that it makes it difficult to then counter-attack sometimes against a Liverpool side. I'd expect changes pretty quickly. Um, if it doesn't change soon in that second half. OK, well, Dean, thank you very much. Liverpool behind at the break. It is Liverpool nil, Atalanta 1, thanks to Gianluca Scamacca's opening goal for the Travellers. Um, here in the Europa League tonight, over on TalkSport 2, another English side in action, West Ham away at Bayer Leverkusen, who could win the Bundesliga title with victory at the weekend. Goalless in that game on TalkSport 2. Roma lead AC Milan. The winner will face West Ham or Leverkusen. Benfica won at Marseille, nil at the break, and the winner will face Liverpool or Atalanta. Let's get the latest from the Europa Conference League, where Aston Villa are in action. Talk sports, Abigail Davis. Yeah, half time. It's Aston Villa 1, Lille 0. Villa came into this one having won all five of their previous home matches in the Europa Conference League this season with an aggregate score of 12 2. It was the away side, though, who settled the quicker in this one, stringing some lovely passing moves together. Villa content for them to do so predominantly in their own half. But in quick succession against the runner play, Villa's star man had a few decent chances. The first from an out swinging corner from the left hand side finding its way to Conser at the back post who teed up the English striker Ollie Watkins. His effort was comfortably collected but then from another corner Ollie Watkins made no mistake a header into the back of the net to give the home side the lead. At the other end of the pitch Emmy Martinez has been absolutely remarkable pulled off some spectacular saves to deny a Lille side getting in behind with relative ease as Diakete and David were denied. Half time though it's Villa who lead here by a goal to nil. Also at the break tonight in the Conference League, it's Club Bruges 1, Park Salonica nil, and it finished earlier on, Olympiacos 3, Fenerbahce 2, and Victoria Pilsen nil, Fiorentina nil. OK, let's get the half-time odds on TalkSport, all thanks to Labrooks. Odds update on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. This one looks a difficult one to call. Liverpool to win is 8-5. The draw is 11-5. And Atalanta to win is also 8-5. Those are the halftime odds with Labricks. It's 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Odds update on TalkSport with Labricks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. So a familiar story for those that follow the Reds. They have conceded the first goal on the evening live on TalkSport. The Europa League quarterfinal first leg. It is Liverpool nil, Atalanta 1. Kickoff on TalkSport with Ladbrokes. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. You may not know that you have the power to compare great loan deals with Compares the Market. Oh, I've got one. Did you know there's no word that rhymes with wolf? Carl, we're talking about loans. But it's another thing people may not know. <sighs> Meerkat, your loan with the power to compare. We'll check your eligibility without it affecting your credit score. With a range of deals available. Find a loan that's right for you. Move. Zulf. Oh, Wolf! Oh, no, that's the word. Compare the Market Limited acts as a credit broker, not a lender. Credit is subject to status, UK residents and 18 plus only. Ah, spring. Little birdies. The smell of freshly cut grass. And at Subway... The all-new Smokehouse menu is on fire. Try the Chipotle cheesesteak with our melted pepper cheese, flaming hot jalapenos, lettuce and peppers, all topped off with our extra spicy Chipotle Southwest sauce. Available in Subway stores and in the app. If you think you can handle the heat, Subway, eat fresh. Freshly prepared per order. Being off on now. Now he's absolutely launched that. Oh, now. Woods is in the woods. Now that's just magic. Now that's a drive. Oh, now he's just pulled that shot. 
Oh, now is this the putt that wins him the green jacket? Now there it is. Stream the Masters and all of Sky Sports without a contract. Head to nowtv.com. Sky Sports content stream via internet. 18 plus. Full terms apply. Here they are, the racing lovers of the UK. Phone in hand, ready to play the Coral Reward Shaker. Look at them shake. We've got the regulars at the race course shaking their phone with confidence. And look, they've won a free bet. Parents on a day out just happy to be here. They've got it too. An odds booster for them. Lovely stuff. Everyone's a winner. Play Coral's free reward shaker this Grand National Festival to win guaranteed daily rewards and offers. Coral, we're here for it. 18 plus UK. Max one reward or offer per player per day. Reward restrictions, requirements and T's and C's apply. Take time to think. Join the nation in cinching it. Buy your perfect car online. And get first class assistance from start to finish. Your new car, madam, with friendly customer service available seven days a week. Hello, this is Cinch. How can I help you? An expert walkthrough of your new car when it's delivered. Mm. And a fat free 14 day money back guarantee. Hardly surprising, Cinch is rated excellent on Trustpilot. So join the nation in absolutely cinching it. Search Cinch and buy your next car today. Return subject to mileage restrictions, T's and C's apply. Not everything in golf makes sense, but buying pre owned clubs does. We're Golf Bidder, an official partner of the PGA that helped millions of golfers over the last 25 years find quality and affordable clubs to improve their game. So while you may not always trust your swing, you can trust our clubs. Golf is difficult. Buying great value pre-owned clubs isn't. This week, save even more with 15% off thousands of drivers at golfbidder.co.uk, the home of pre-owned clubs. At Virgin Bet, we love weekends. And it's a good bet you'll love Virgin Bet's wonderful weekend football offer. New and existing customers get a free £5 bet when they put £10 on the football this weekend and every weekend of the season. Weekend, weekend, weekend. You'll be loving your weekends even more now. Virgin Bet, a good bet. Singles and bet builders only exclude virtuals, boosts and specials. Minimum odds 1 to 2, except in 24 hours, used in 7 days. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. Bet responsibly. Be gambleaware.org. Europa League live on Talk Sport with Village Hotels. With 33 locations across the UK, Village Hotels have everything under one roof for a great breakaway. It's the reason Marconi invented radio and God gave you ears. And he scored! It's a brilliant goal! The Europa League, live on Talk Sport. Plays it to the edge of the area. It's into the net from Skamaka, who hits it right-footed from 10 yards out and converts a chance at last. Atalanta have had several opportunities. They finally scored one of them, and Skamaka has come back to home Liverpool. At West Ham, he couldn't flourish, but with Atalanta, he certainly is. And the Italian side are ahead at Anfield. It's Liverpool nil, Atalanta one. And it's Gianluca Scamacca who scores. You're listening to Kickoff live on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. It's 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Let's very quickly get an update from the Masters at Augusta, which teed off earlier today with Arnold Clark. The Masters update on TalkSport with Arnold Clark. Sell your car with no admin fees, any make or model. Gabby Partington has the latest. Yeah, thanks, Hugh. Well, it's the American Bryson DeChambeau who leads the way at the top on seven under. Three straight birdies to open up his round and to top it off, two straight birdies through the famous Amen Corner. Well, what a start to the championship he's having. Just another round of golf, right? Well, there's a three-way tie in second as it stands. Ben Arn joined by the Kiwi Ryan Fox, who also opened up with a birdie on one, two and three in the second Masters appearance. Also three shots back is the 2016 Masters champion Danny Willett, who finished the day on a four under 68. Well, the favourite and world number one Scotty Scheffler is creeping up the leaderboard as expected on two under and fancies his chances of whacking on another green jacket one more time. Well, playing in the same group is world number two Rory McIlroy, who's had a bit of a roller coaster start, but has settled in and managed to birdie before the turn and is all level. But all attention turns to the GOAT, the five times master champion Tiger Woods, who's finally underway, teed off just this minute, launched his drive for hundreds of patrons with binoculars in hands to hopefully witness more greatness. Well, plenty more to come, but as it stands, Bryson DeChambeau leading the charge on seven under. 
Gabby, thank you. We're back underway at Anfield. Liverpool nil, Atalanta won in the first leg of the Europa League quarterfinals. The second 45 minutes with former England striker Dean Ashton and TalkSport Sam Matterface. Liverpool weren't very good in the first half. They trailed by goal to nil and Jurgen Klopp has called for the emergency special teams. So Boschlai, Salah and Robertson all on for Simicast Jones and Elliott at the start of the second half. And so has already made an impact. Dean Ashton. He has, driving down the right-hand side. Salah came short, so Bozlai went in behind. Tried to cut it back for Nunez, and good goalkeeping from Musso. But it's actually no surprise. That's what you should do as a manager if you're not happy with that first half, which... Here comes Cop Miners inside the area looking for Pasalic. She's tucked away by McAllister just in case. And then Gomez leaves it for Canate, who hesitated and then eventually cleared up towards the halfway line. I'll run through the two 11s for you in just a second because they're much altered, obviously, Liverpool as a result of that. But I wanted to ask you whether or not, so often this, this campaign, the reserves, the younger players have managed to get by for Liverpool. They've done the job when, when called upon. But tonight it didn't look right, didn't feel right in that first 45 minutes. The six changes that Jurgen Klopp made, did he take Atalanta a little bit lightly? Did he have too much faith in those who he started the game with? Well, I think the fact that he's made a change at half-time, I think, says that he did get it wrong. You know, I think that's him ultimately admitting that maybe he got it wrong and the players that he'd picked hadn't done the job properly in that in that first half. And they... Uh, I don't think they would have taken Atalanta lightly, but I think they've been quite surprised, I would expect, at just the bravery and the manner in which Atalanta have, have played and the seriousness of making sure that they still come away from Anfield with a with a positive result. So it's 1-0 to Atalanta live on Talk Sport tonight. Kelleher is the Liverpool goalkeeper. Now Gomez, Canate, Van Dijk and Robertson the back four. Endo, McAllister and Saboslai in midfield with Salah, Nunez and Gakpo as the three-pronged attack. They're attacking the cop away to our right-hand side and Nunez has just put on the accelerators and tried to get to a loose ball which had run towards the edge of the 18-yard box and it was cleared away. Now Saboslai's got it after it was half cleared. He shoots from distance, takes a deflection, the ball goes behind, it's away for a corner and there's the Anfield roar. I think by making those changes, it's it's what elite managers do. It's They don't care about how players feel. They do the thing that's right. It's giving the crowd a lift, seeing those players come out. And you would expect a big, big second half here from Liverpool. Corner near side to be taken by the Hungarian Saboslai. He places the ball down edge of the quadrant. He's got five to aim at inside the penalty area. It's a deep one, probably too deep. It goes right the way through the box on the other side. And Robertson gets the chance to recycle it. His ball is heavy as well. Goes right through the penalty area. Back to Saboslai on the other side. And we start again. Saboslai's third ball into the box is headed away by the retreating uh, Edison. And then it's clicked up by... Uh, Gomez towards uh, McAllister who sees it back to his goalkeeper Kelleher away to our left. The Atalanta team is Musso and a back three of Hine, Jim Seaty and Derone. Hine has gone into the books. Apacosta is the right wing back, Ruggieri the left wing back, Pasalic and Edison in the centre with Cup Miners and De Ketela behind Skamaka, uh, Skamaka in attack. Skamaka who scored the only goal of the game so far after 38 minutes from a Zappa Costa cross down the right-hand side, getting in behind Simicast. Wouldn't be the only reason why Simicast was uh, taken off at half-time, but certainly that would have uh, played into Jurgen Klopp's thinking. And uh, they've got a deficit to make up once again at Anfield, as they've done so many times. Their second-half performances is far outweighed their first across the season. Late goal from 76 minutes on would have been unbelievable in terms of ratio. Over a third of the goals they've scored in matches in all competitions have come after the 76-minute mark. Yeah, because they've got such strength with the squad that they're able to bring players on that will make a difference when the opposition start to tire, both physically and mentally. I mean, it must be difficult, I have to admit, for these managers to try and shuffle things around, especially with Jurgen Klopp. He's got players coming back from injury. Salah not long ago had a hamstring injury. Nunez down by the uh, byline trying to get the cross in. He might have just kept that in and then Sabosla backing him up can't fire it into the box because there's a block from Derone. Eventually it's cleared up to the halfway line. Canate shrugs away Skamaka, gets a big cheer from the crowd as a result of that. And uh, six minutes into the second half. Liverpool have the ball once again. They've had a lot of the ball tonight. 67% possession to 33 from Atalanta. They've had only six attempts on goal. 
only one of them on target. Here's Robertson down the left-hand side trying to influence proceedings in that regard. It goes out for a corner after a slight tackle from Edison. Stops him from getting the cross in and it goes out of play over on the far side. 1-0 to Atalanta. And what I mentioned at half-time with a full-back coming on such as Robertson, he's got so much quality and energy to get forwards. He automatically pins the opposition full-back in to stop that threat in behind him. Here is the corner then, whipped in towards the edge of the six-yard box, and the header by Van Dijk is narrowly over the top of the crossbar. He got up beautifully and met it with the meat of his forehead, and it just went an inch or so over the top of the bar. Both him and Nunez were going towards the ball, and it was Van Dijk who got up there, but maybe he just got a little bit over the ball there, and it flicked up off his head and went over the top of the crossbar. Yeah, he just collapsed um, with his midriff. He just didn't stay tall. He's collapsed into it and dipped down and it just meant then it came off the top of his head rather than the meat of the forehead so used to just seeing him come onto those and power it into the net just collapsed slightly with his core stability <laughs> oh, I have to start working on that again <laughs> I'm sure he's really struggling for that <laughs> his rippling washboard stomach <laughs> 53 minutes gone you're listening to talk sport I did say that as if I was really jealous didn't I <laughs> it's probably because I am uh, ball is out of play over on the far side thrown in uh, delicately towards the edge of the area and was there a handball there by Endo I think there might have been right on the edge of the box and VAR will check this to see exactly where the geography was the ball was thrown in from the right hand side Endo's arm came out certainly it hit him was he inside the area or out of it, just outside, just outside. Oh, Good call from the ref. Close. I get that. Look, Endo knows nothing about it in terms of trying to actually throw his arm across to to whack it away. I think he gets his arm across to try and just shield himself from from the player, and in, unintentionally then strikes his arm. And they are just checking the geography of the situation on the VAR monitors, but I do think, from what I've seen so far, that looks very much outside the box rather than in. But uh, our Turkish VAR is just making sure. And the referee seems to believe that it's all done and dusted, so there will be a free, a free kick quickly taken. Hasselic left it. There's a bit of oh, re reshaping going on. And then Cup Miners will strike it straight into the near post and easily caught by the goalkeeper who bowls it out immediately up to Gomez and Liverpool turn defence into attack at rapid speed as you would expect. That ball from Gomez though behind Nunez who as he slowed up to try and receive that ball slipped and the attack and the momentum just dissipated. Back with Van Dijk who helps it on to McAllister. Liverpool come forward, there's a bit of space left side and that's been exploited by Andy Robertson, Gakpo in a half position, about 10 yards back from the edge of the area, finds it to Saboshlai. Saboshlai gets it back again, and then moves the ball forward into Gakpo, who drops deep, plays it back towards the edge of the centre circle, Van Dijk sweeps it wide, and Robertson has it left side. 10 minutes gone, second half, 1-0 to Atalanta. Here is Endo feeding Nunez down the left side, and Hein goes across, and then he wins it again, in a tight position, comes back to Salah from Gakpo. Salah again, good save to his right by the goalkeeper Musso, who got up high towards the near post and pushed it behind and away for a corner. Chaos inside the box. Nunez did really well when the chance looked as if it had eluded him he clawed it back fed Gakpo fed Salah his shot was blocked came back to Salah again and then the save was pushed behind terrific save in the end because it came from behind a defender Musso parrying it wide ball in towards the near post it comes off the shoulder of Konate and then it goes through into the goalkeeper's hands and it's a good claim by uh, Musso away to our right hand side I think they were just checking momentarily for a Liverpool penalty on that occasion. The check was over pretty quickly and it was cleared away uh, by the Atalanta goalkeeper. But uh, another couple of flashes from Liverpool, a couple of opportunities that have, uh, one of which has had to be stopped by the big Italian goalkeeper. Offside flag up against the Kettler at the other end and it's going to be a free kick. Liverpool, who have had a habit of conceding, but it's definitely still a tough place to come this and I think Atalanta will be mindful of it as we go into the final 35 minutes.
Here is Gakpo down the left-hand side. Hein tries to get the better of him. Gakpo does brilliantly. Here's Nunez with a chance. He steered it over the top of the crossbar again. It was pulled back to the edge of the six-yard area after Gakpo got the better of Hein. He set up Darwin Nunez, who leant back instead of over the ball and lifted it high over the top of the bar. Well, that's twice now, Hein has got himself into a difficult position defensively. He's on a yellow card, he can't make a challenge. It was Darwin Nunez who kept the ball in last time. This time it's Gakpo that just shunts the ball the opposite side of the defender, plays it back to Nunez, and you're absolutely right. He's try I don't know whether he's trying to dink this over the keeper into the far post or strike it low, but ultimately if you do lean back, it's so, so difficult to keep it, keep it down. So Moslai rebounds the ball into the middle of the park and Liverpool have it once again. Gakpo turns away from Edison. It's played by McAllister to the far side. Robertson takes over. 57 minutes on the clock. Liverpool nil, Atalanta one on talk sport. Gakpo accelerating forward, gets a push in the back, keeps his feet, feeds Joe Gomez. Gomez sends it out wide towards the left. It's in towards the edge of the six-yard box again for Nunez from Salah. He tried to flick it behind him, and he was rather uh, clumsy with his finish, and it bounced into the air, and it's an easy grab for the goalkeeper away to our right-hand side. Just the intensity and the speed of the passing is so much better from Liverpool and the quality of the first touch. There isn't the passes going astray so far in this second half. Skamaka is coming forward here, De Ketela just managed to get away from Endo momentarily but he's been forced back by a combination of the Japanese captain and uh, Mo Salah to the halfway line they've gone even further back now to their goalkeeper as they look to retreat here and just uh, just take a little bit of pressure off the back line because it's been under constant waves of pressure in this second half since the introduction of those three substitutes Atalanta's last visit to England saw them rout Everton across Stanley Park by five goals to one back in 2017. I was actually at that game. <laughs> um, they are one of just three teams to have won at both Merseyside clubs in European competition. Did you know that? No. Do you know who the other two are? To have won at both. Ah, yes. A little quiz question for you, Dino. Oh. Ah, all right. Okay, let have a little think about yeah, it. If you yeah, want to text yeah. us, 8 10 89. Uh, just three teams have won at both Merseyside clubs in European competition. Who are they? Atalanta is one. Who are the other two? 8 10 89 on the text if you want to get involved. Here is Canate deep inside his own half, trying to turn under pressure. Has to stretch, gives the ball away. De Kessler was in the wrong position as the ball came back. The upside flag went up anyway. The free kick has been given. And Liverpool, who wanted to get it started, have been denied. And the opportunity to do so. Another change, Darwin Nunez. I think Jurgen Klopp rather ruthlessly has seen enough and he is going to replace him with Luis Diaz who will go out to the left-hand side and Gakpo will go through the middle. Nunez gets a uh, standing ovation, well, a, a ripple of applause, let's say that, from the uh, Liverpool supporters because uh, he certainly is very much appreciated for his effort even if his quality has been lacking a little bit tonight. Yeah, and supporters appreciate and recognise that they know he's not trying to miss those chances and they've got to stick by him I think also it, it could partly be as a, as a as a tactic to try and still keep players fresh a big game's coming up uh, for Liverpool though I think this week most people believe that it's a good week for the title chases all three of them at home Crystal Palace away on Sunday at two o'clock, here's a chance at the other end. The ball's played into the box towards the edge of the six-yard box. Skamaka is there to finish it off. And Atalanta in behind the Liverpool defence again. Another right-wing cross. And another finished goal by Skamaka. And Atalanta lead by two goals to nil on the hour mark at Anfield. What on earth happened? I thought he was offside initially. I think the Liverpool back line did too. But the goal's going to stand. And it's 2-0 to the Italians. Oh, you're absolutely right. They switch off. They think this is offside. And again, it comes down that right-hand side. Robertson, a bit like Simakas, sort of dives out of position. It's then fed down the right-hand side to De Ketelier. And I think it's Konate that keeps him on or initially. It's then Iskamaka. Has he gone a little bit early? The ball was played across. And I have to say, 
the coolness of this finish from Skamaka on the half volley, left foot, side foot, into the back of the net. Terrific finish from the big Italian. I have to say, he was in an offside position in an earlier part of the move. When the initial ball is played down the right-hand side, he's about a yard in front of the Liverpool back line, which is why I think everybody thought he was in an offside position when the cross came in. He wasn't because the ball was received on the right-hand side prior to that, and De Ketela then swung it in. He was on an onside position. He swung the ball in, and by which time, Canate had dropped, played him on side. He was there, and he finished it off beautifully. And Atalanta now have a two-goal lead. And Liverpool have got a bit of a mountain to climb here, Dean. Just a bit. I mean, again, you know, I talk about the way that the, the manager set up Gasparini to take advantage of those situations. When they came around, he's having the quality at the top end of the pitch. The Ketelier doing brilliantly with the cross and Skamaka you're right because he was offside he's got that three yard head start which means as long as he gets himself back on side means that he's then got the time to finish without the pressure of a defender Cup minus down that right hand side is in an offside position there's been another goal down at Villa Park Talk Sports Abby Davis yeah 58 minutes on the clock it's now Aston Villa 2 at Lille 0 they've created the best chances in this second half should have had a penalty when Ollie Watkins was barged off the ball in the area but again their second goal coming from a set piece a corner taken short Bailey actually loses his foot in as he squares the ball to McGinn on the edge of the area his strike takes a huge deflection Chevalier rooted to the spot as he watched the ball trickle into to the bottom left corner Villa lead two goals to nil 58 gone well Atalanta, Atalanta lead two goals to nil here at Anfield tonight Liverpool behind and struggling to find their shooting boots again ball play to the edge of the area it's collected by Gomez as Liverpool come on the attack in search of a equalising goal a goal which has evaded them so far they've had several big chances 11 shots on goal only two on target so far here is uh, Robertson down the left side. Pulls the ball through the 18-yard box. It's out to clear by Ruggieri and out for a throw-in on the near touchline. And Liverpool are urgent now. They've got a bit of desperation about them because they know that coming back from two goals down in any match is difficult. It's not beyond them, but it is incredibly difficult. And at this stage of the competition, to give an advantage to an away team like this it's almost deadly, isn't it? There's not many teams that come back from a 2-0 deficit from the first leg at home. Well, especially with Atalanta being so good at home. I just, I feel, I feel for Canate and I feel for defenders, to be honest, because of that rule change. Because what it does is, if you ask Canate would he do anything differently, he, pr he probably wouldn't, because he was in a great position to start with. But because of the way that offside rule works Skamaka's ahead of him so he, ca he can't get back and defend it properly oh, and it, here they come again De Ketela has got the ball on the edge of the area and he sped it out towards Miners, who could finish it here he sent it wide what a chance it came across his body onto his left foot and he's dragged it through the six yard box and it's four yards wide of the post that was a golden chance to finish off the tie De Ketelet, that is just so superb because he faked to, to pass it to the opposite side, reversed it to Coke Miners, who on his favoured left foot has the time to size it up and he snatches at it. Instead of striking through the ball, he hits the top of the ball, which so often just bobbles it and spins it wide. It's a terrible miss. Well, whatever happens tonight, you'll be able to follow all the fallout on Trans Europe Express on Sunday night, 9 o'clock. Andy Brassel and Danny Kelly will review all the weekend action. Of course, all the Euro Europa League and Champions League ties as well. Ball into the box on the right side from Diaz to the edge of the area and Sabochlai. Backing towards the middle of the park, it's headed into the air by the retreating Pasolic. Gomez now on the attack. Liverpool trailing by two goals to nil here with just 25 minutes to go down the right towards the corner flag the ball goes across it's blocked by the defender and it's out for a throw in midway between the edge of the 18 yard box and the bar line and it's a Liverpool throw in which uh, at this moment in time in that area of the field needs to be capitalised upon they need to make sure they continue to try and probe this Atalanta defence a defence that up until now has lived a bit of a charm life but also the way they've structured the team has kept Liverpool arm's length for most of it. Diaz, the human firework, drops, picks the ball up and then runs forward. Sends it out towards Gomez, whose first touch just about 
is kept under control. Salah in a right wing position through the legs of the defender. McAllister coming in behind Edison who gets in front of him, scoops it away. It's out for a throw in. Gomez tells him to slow down, not rush it. Get it out for him to take. And Gomez waits for Sabosla to come forward and then sends it back to the Hungarian on the right side of the Liverpool midfield. 2-0 to Atalanta. Wow. Well, also, it's not as if Jurgen Klopp hasn't made the changes to try and get back into this game. But again, still a long way to go. A lot of concentration needed for Atalanta. Here is uh, Saboshlai down the right side, plays it against Pasalic, it goes out of play. I mentioned earlier it's an incredibly tough place to come. Only Manchester United, Arsenal and City have managed to avoid defeat in the previous 25 games that have been at Anfield this season. And United were very lucky. They conceded a huge number of shots in that match and didn't uh, just somehow manage to come away with a nil-nil draw. Here is Robertson out towards the left side, collected now uh, by Gakpo, gets to the edge of the area, right-footed ball into the box, is headed away, comes back to Endo, who nudges it into the path of Gomez, who slides it out wide. It's a Bosch line into the path of Salah, who's in an offside position, and it goes behind, and it's going to be a free kick offside away to our right and the momentum goes out of the Liverpool attack and maybe the momentum has gone out of Aston Villa Abby Davis yeah quite possibly 63 minutes on the clock it's now Aston Villa 2 Lille 1 it was a deep delivery into the area Goodmanson completely unmarked at the back post he kept his composure a stunning finish to beat Emmy Martinez Martinez absolutely superb up to that point there was nothing he could do not helped out by his back line at all there it's Aston Villa 2 Lille 1 164 gone. Well, according to the Opta supercomputer, Liverpool had a 35.2% chance of winning the competition before tonight, a 57.8% chance of making the final before tonight, but I think their chances have been slightly hampered by tonight's display and the fact that they trail by two goals to nil. Here is Ruggieri down the left side for Atalanta, powering forward, does well enough to feed Skamaka, who's on a hat-trick. Gets it back to the centre circle, Edison combines well with De Ketela, and then out towards the wide right, and Zappa Costa's cross into the box, he's aimed towards Miners, who rose up with Joe Gomez. He didn't get there, but the ball ran loose, and Pasolic got there before any red shirt, he was quickest to it. And Atalanta on the attack with Daron now who's about 15 yards short of the penalty area left side. Sends it square to Jim Seaty. He goes wide to Zabacosta again. And then back it comes towards uh, Edison. And Atalanta quite content to see it back to their goalkeeper with 21 and a half minutes to go, Dean Ashton. But it's pretty obvious where they are, the threat. They are just waiting to intercept and pounce on the space. Gakpo picks it up as uh, they make a loose pass and Saboshlai feeds the Dutchman after they turned it over he's got it back again six yards short of the penalty area Endo to the left where it's helped on by Van Dijk into the path of Robertson and then back to Van Dijk again and Liverpool just binding their time here forward towards McAllister spins away tries to play it out wide right but the route to Mo Salah was cut off by uh, Martin Daron and Skamaka then manages to escape a challenge from Canate and then play the ball out beautifully to Zappa Costa over on the far side. A strong boy, isn't he? Skamaka uses his body well to hold the ball up, but also got good feet as well. He's linked well and played a few dangerous passes before getting himself in the box. Let's go back to Villa Park. Another development for Abby Davis. Yeah, 66 minutes gone. Reprieve for Aston Villa and their back line because Goodmanson's goal has been ruled out for offside. It's Aston Villa 2, Lille 0. It was a really, really close call. We don't get the benefit of seeing the lines on the screen that we have here, but it looked incredibly tight. I thought he was onside. He peeled away from his marker, completely free out on that left-hand side. So you would have thought he'd be able to maintain in line with Villa's back line, but it looked like he'd gone to too early then because the decision has been made the goal is chalked off and it remains Aston Villa 2 Lille nil 66 on the clock well they're leading West Ham against uh, Bayer Leverkusen is still nil nil in Germany which is a very good result for uh, David Moyes and his team if it stays like that I'm not surprised I'm not surprised I think that was a, 
a tough draw for Leverkusen. Here is uh, Diaz over on the left-hand side, trying to feed the ball into Salo, took an extra touch on the edge of the D, lost it momentarily, but Liverpool got it back with Gomez who shoots right-footed. And it's well wide of goal. 254 senior appearance tonight, Joe Gomez without a goal. Yeah, I mean, the opportunity was there, took the snapshot on, but there is a reason why he hasn't scored, <laughs> and that's because he, he he hit part of the ground before the ball. So it ended up shanking it wide. And that has to be an area. When you've got Bradley and Trent Alexander-Arnold on your, on your bench, and Gomez is getting a lot of the ball, there has to be an area that Jurgen Klopp, I'm sure, will look at. Also, Jota, the slotter, is waiting to come on he rarely misses a chance does he doesn't actually sound that pleasant that does it <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying but <laughs> they seem gone you're listening to talk sport um, and he's only got one substitution left <laughs> you've gone now haven't you <laughs> here is <laughs> Robertson up to uh, Gakpo holds off the attentions of uh, Hein and then it's collected on the right side by uh, Jim Seaty who's in a bit of a wrestling match with uh, McAllister and then it's not a great ball is it again and once again they've turned it over quickly and De Kettler is escaping out to the wide right Zabacosta does brilliantly to keep it in McAllister goes across wires into a challenge and it's out of play for a throw in well the position we're in so high up in this stand you get a great view tactically of the game and you just can see it the minute that Liverpool lose the ball those spaces that are there for Atalanta because of the amount of attacking players they have got on the pitch you just can see that it would only take one pass to dissect the Liverpool defence Gakpo who is uh, penalised and uh, Diego Schotter is warming up on this near touchline started training again this week he was pictured in training this week and you just wonder whether or not they're protecting him ahead of the running and whether they think it's necessary to use him it looks as if he is going to get changed to at least be ready if called upon in the next few minutes we've got 17 to go Liverpool behind here they haven't lost in this stadium since Real Madrid beat them 34 games ago that was in the Champions League round of 16 last February it was a chastening defeat as well 5-2 the final scoreline and this is a bit of a chastening defeat should this be the full-time scoreline Dean Ashton oh, it would it'd be a fantastic result for Atalanta and certainly not one that many would have expected I thought they were capable of scoring here no doubt but if they were able to keep Liverpool out that would be incredible and De Kessler trying to get away from Van Dijk not an easy thing to do he stretches out his arm pushes him away and says no thank you very much and Kelleher sweeps up on the edge of the area and is urged forward to push the ball into Robertson. Robertson out to Gakpo, far touchline. He turns, moves in field, plays it back to McAllister. McAllister across to Canate. Liverpool's home record in this tournament, pretty impressive. 25 home matches in the Europa League since... Uh, and they've only lost one of those, but they might be losing here. And Skamaka is away down the left-hand side again. They've turned the ball over. He centres it, takes a deflection off Canate and goes into the arms of Kelleher and brings it away. Atlanta have only won seven, only won one of their last seven away matches across all competitions. But they're in front by two goals to nil here tonight. And Liverpool just not really playing with the requisite speed or penetration to get the better of their back line. Well, really, that should have been another opportunity for Skamaka. Does he realise he's on a hat-trick? Ball was brilliantly played to him by Cook Miners, who'd stolen it off Endo and played him in down the left-hand side. He just took... He just sort of dawdled over it to it, Skamaka. I was thinking, go and attack this. Get it out of your feet and take the strike on for your hat-trick. I think Liverpool will be pretty pleased that he didn't. Jota is stripped. And he is ready for action. And a rescue act is incoming he doesn't miss the chances that the others do he is pretty deadly pretty accurate and they are taking no chances here endo off jota on it means that that's the final change for uh, jürgen klopp and it's his first appearance since february's knee injury he is available and ready to go and they have luis diaz mo salah diogo jota cody gakpo 
McAllister and Saboshlai all on the pitch now. And it's an assertive looking team. Immediately he turns the defender to Rome, gets into the area and he goes down under pressure. And I think the referee is going to give a foul here. And I'm not sure that that's outside the area. The referee says free kick right on the edge. We'll have to see it again. But it's very close to being a penalty. Uh, it's just outside, just outside the area. It is. The, the challenge is outside and Jota falls into the area. But the challenge between the legs is outside of the penalty area. Difficult decision for the referee, but he made it pretty quickly. Yeah, and it's right on the chalk of the white line of the penalty area, down this right side. They've been allowed to pull the ball back just a little bit. And Robertson wants to swing this one into the box. Ruggieri has picked up a yellow card as a result of that challenge. Immediately, Jota has come off the bench to make an impact. Liverpool nil, Atalanta 2 on Talk Sport. And the free kick is incoming from... Dominic Soboslai on this near side. He will maybe defer to Andy Robertson, but the two of them are standing over the ball. It's like a short corner in hockey. They both wait, look up. There's six to aim at inside the box. It is Soboslai who sends it far post. It's headed away, comes out of the box, and Gomez, who's encouraged to shoot, does, and again sends it right over the top of the bar. And Dean Ashton sort of leans back as if to say, why? And I suppose you've got to look at it from an odds point of view. The expected goals for that particular scenario is very low when Joe Gomez is over the ball. Would it not have been better to hold it and then try and slip it in behind the defence for someone to run onto again? Yes, and, and looking at Jurgen Klopp's reaction, I think he absolutely agrees with me. It's a ridiculous decision from Gomez when you've still got everybody in the penalty area. You can just recycle it wide, keep the pressure on. Like you said, the likelihood of him scoring is more chance of me growing hair back in the next 10 minutes than Gomez, I think, thrashing that into the top corner. So do the right thing. And what he's done is he's got caught up with the supporters shouting, shoot, because they are desperate for him to score. That's not the right thing to do. Given away by Ruggieri, and now Diaz is scampering clear. He's fed the ball down the left channel. The ball is too heavy for Diogo Jota. And out comes the goalkeeper and slides towards the ball. Picks it up and he'll take his time over this. He will get back to his feet eventually. It is Liverpool nil, Atalanta 2 in the Europa League, live on TalkSport with Village Hotels. Visit villagehotels.com. That Haim, who's been yellow carded earlier in the in the first half he's really composed himself after a couple of scary moments at the start of the second half he's in the middle of that back three and he's marshalled it very well actually in this second half title race is big this weekend here is Robertson big gap to run into sends the ball to the far post Salah is there he's not going to miss offside flag has gone up though and it may well stop Liverpool from getting back in the game there will be a VAR check there was a huge ocean of space for Robertson to run into in between left wing back and centre half. He galloped down the left side of the box. He exploited it and he saw Salah lurking at the far post. It's very tight, but I think he's just offside. He went a little bit early, Mo Salah. He did. He was just anxious, wasn't he, to make sure that he was slightly ahead when that ball got played across from Robertson. Brilliant, brilliant underlapping run from Robertson Jim CT was out of position because he'd followed Gakpo the space was there he drove into it Robertson it was a great ball across as well to Salah they who'd did, just gone a bit early they did they? do a check to see whether or not the ball the uh, player was offside in the build up to the goal that check was over pretty quickly waved play on the referee and we're underway well there's a handball here against Alexis McAllister a good 10 yards outside the box I don't think he knew too much about it. Canate may or will have been the one who's been penalised, but actually it was McAllister who was arguing with the, the referee. He went up and it hit him on the arm. Well, he, he sort of hit his head, then his shoulder, then his arm. It was a little bit uh, unfair, I think, to penalise him for that. Seeing as that's, I think you're not supposed to really be penalised when you head the ball onto your own arm. Head, shoulders, knees and arm. Yeah, that was really? a little bit unnecessary, wasn't it? And the referee's blown well, again, the whistle, I, given a free kick in a dangerous position. Again, Skamaka 
difficult to handle. Great body position when that ball's coming up, making it difficult there for Canate. That ball whipped in by Kupmeyers towards the far post, the header back across the face of goal, and Skamaka sends a header over the top of the crossbar from four yards out. That could have been a hat trick. Oh, it should have been. Jim Ziti does brilliantly on that far side when the ball comes across. Rather than going for goal, he just helps it across. Skamaka's got three players round him, and just about they do enough to put him off the header, and he gets ahead of it. He's then stretching back, tries to keep it down, and just heads it over from four yards out but I think that's actually good defending in terms of three players around him pushing him and shoving him as he's trying to head up could that be the moment that spares Liverpool's blushes in the Europa League because a third goal there the tie is certainly over and he's had a couple of big chances to further the Atalanta lead as Liverpool in desperation chasing down this two goal deficit uh, leaving themselves a little bit vulnerable at the back and they have conceded further chances to the Italians but it remains just the 2-0 and 2-0 is strikeable for a team like Liverpool even if they haven't been at their best tonight they know that they can go and cause damage in Italy and they won't be favourites not anymore but they still have a chance it's a maybe an outside chance a much smaller opportunity than they had at the beginning of this game but with players like Jota coming back and Salah available from the start and Trent Alexander-Arnold back in the fold. And the hope that they can turn it round will be great amongst that Liverpool support that travelled to Bergamo in a week's time. And the commentary will be live on TalkSport from the quarterfinals of this Europa League. Here's Saboslai just left of the centre circle. Back it goes to Van Dijk. Into Saboslai again. And he moves forward into the edge of the halfway line. He's given the ball away to Skamaka with a poor pass. And then there was an opportunity to get it to Pasolic. And then it runs through to Edison, who's inside the box. This to finish it. Comes back to Pasolic. It's in. It's 3-0. And Liverpool are in massive trouble in the Europa League. Vasilic provided the finishing touch. It was another miss at the back for Liverpool. Skamaka got away after a mistake by Saboslai. And when the ball ended up in the middle of the six-yard box, the first effort was saved from Cop Miners off Kelleher. It came back to Vasilic and he was not going to miss. And these opportunities that Atalanta have racked up have been ruthlessly taken. And Liverpool are finding themselves with a mountain to climb to stay in the Europa League. It's a stunning performance from Atalanta, who have come here and they have snatched what looks like now a certain place in the semi-finals and barring a miracle comeback in a week's time. Liverpool are going to be out of the competition before they've really got into the business end. Well, well, well. Who expected this scoreline at Anfield? But they've stolen another goal. They've stolen the ball off Saboslai. Driven at the Liverpool defence once again. Skamaka fakes to shoot. Lovely reverse pass into Edison. And they just took a deflection. As Gakpo just comes ahead now. Here's a Robertson into the box. Tries to chip it over the goalkeeper. It's cleared off the line by Ruggieri. And now he's away again, Skamaka. Moving at pace, sending the ball down the left-hand side. Picked up by Kopmeyers, 85 on the clock. The ball down the left-hand side, Liverpool on the attack. And it's picked up by Canate, and it's cleared away by Liverpool. Diaz misplaces a pass. Leverkusen go in front against West Ham on TalkSport 2. Here is Gakpo, out to the far side. Robertson takes it on, Diaz has got it now. What a couple of big mistakes. Here's Diaz from the edge of the area. His shot's parried away by the goalkeeper who dives to his left. Desperation, urgency about Liverpool. They must get something in the final five minutes if they've got any hope of trying to turn this tie around in a week's time, Dean Ashton. Oh, absolutely, you'd think. It's an incredible result so far for Atalanta. Tactically, he's got it absolutely spot on. Gasparini, he said he wanted to come here and enjoy this atmosphere. Well, it's his own supporters that he's enjoying here. Well, the noise from our left-hand side and those blue-shirted Atalanta supporters is vibrant. 
They know that victory is just literally minutes away now. It's not an insurmountable scoreline. Liverpool have pulled off stunning comebacks before. But in Bergamo, against an Atalanta team that are very good at home and are a very well-organised side, it is going to be incredibly tricky. And what it does do, Dean, is it causes Liverpool pain. It disrupts their rhythm. It highlights their flaws ahead of what is a very tight title race as well. Oh, it does. It does, and... You know, it might have just been the perfect timing for Atalanta with the result of the weekend against Manchester United. Players coming back from injury and in and around the squad and a, a couple of changes needed because of the schedule. And they've just taken full advantage. They've been really, really ruthless when it's come to those counter-attacks. When they've won it, they have got white shirts forward against that Liverpool defence. There's not many teams that come here and do that. Well, they had only lost one of their last 25 matches in the Europa League before tonight. Their last defeat in this competition at Anfield was 12 years ago. Atalanta have suffered in their last two ties at this level. Maybe it's going to be a third time lucky for them. And if you were wondering, the other two teams that have managed to beat Everton and Liverpool in European competition at their home grounds... It was Benfica and Lyon. Yeah, I wouldn't have got it. Never would have got it, would you? No. Never would have got nope. It. I wonder if anyone did. I'm sure, I'm sure there's too many Liverpool fans who are interested in that tonight. They're interested in this scoreline. And the fallout on the sports bar is going to be rather fascinating. 03717 is the number to call if you want to get through to the boys. Taking your calls as soon as we finished here. Here is Cody Gakpo running through the centre circle trying to release the ball down the left-hand side. Two and a half to go. It's the Atalanta fans that you can hear away to our left. Leverkusen leading West Ham by a goal to nil. Atalanta beating Liverpool 3-0 at Anfield tonight. This is a huge, this is a stunning result. Atalanta who have won only one of their last seven away matches across all competitions. And the only light on the English horizon tonight has come at Villa, Abby Davis. Yeah, 84 minutes on the clock. It is now Aston Villa 2, Lille 1. It was an in-swinging corner from the left, met at the near post by Diakete, whose glancing header ended up in the bottom right-hand corner. Six minutes for Aston Villa to cling on to this lead, to have an advantage going into the second leg. Villa 2, Lille 1, 84 gone. A couple of changes uh, incoming. Atalanta going to make the first uh, of their changes, and it's going to be De Ketelo, who's just come back from an injury himself, actually, who's going to be replaced by Moranchuk, who was so good in the previous round of this competition. He's coming on for De Ketelet. Yeah, he was excellent as well in a, an away game against Napoli. Moranchuk, very different player, that's for sure. And De Ketelet, who's been, he's been outstanding as well, yeah, by the way. He really has, and he's pushing to try and get into the team because yeah. of Moranchuk and uh, Cup Miners being so useful. De Ketelet has a struggle getting in the first team week to week. He's, he's certainly influenced the play tonight, that is for sure. Mistake by Canate, almost gave it straight to Moranchuk, but Liverpool bring it away. We're into the final minute of the 90, and it's 3-0 to Atalanta on what is a stunning night at Anfield. And as much as that Real Madrid defeat hurt a year or so ago, this one will hurt, I think, even more. Real Madrid beating you in the Champions League last 16, it hurts, but you can understand it. Liverpool losing 3-0 at home in the Europa League quarterfinals to Atalanta. That has a different sting about it. Oh, it does. It absolutely does. Especially when you're heavy favourites here at Anfield. But again, you know, if you don't take your chances at this level, these, these sides can hurt you. Three minutes of added time. Diaz picks it up edge of the area, sends it square. Gomez, who's urged not to shoot this time, feeds the ball to Saboslai instead, who shoots it down the throat of the goalkeeper. Now he should have done better with that. Yeah, he should. It was a really good pass from Gomez. He made the right decision this time into Sabozlai. Maybe the ball was just a little bit too straight. He hadn't got it out of his feet properly. 
but still should be looking either side of the goalkeeper Gomez again moving the ball forward Diaz takes it over he's five yards outside the box there's a slip in front of him but he sends it square on to Robertson now on the outside is Gakpo left side produces a cross Jota is there with a header he's leaning backwards a bit too high for him and it went wide of the goal away to our right and maybe that's the last chance gone there are three minutes of added time we've played 30 seconds of those Manchester City go first in the title race this week live on uh, the network will be round the ground Saturday 3pm Sunday we've got the Sunday session Liverpool welcome Palace and Arsenal entertain Aston Villa arguably that Arsenal have the most difficult tie of the weekend everything will be covered on talk sport but Liverpool will hope that there's no hangover no again they'll have to move on very very quickly from this from this game can they just steal one here at the end Diaz with Gakpo to his left Diaz again didn't give it back to him in time there was the opportunity to do so and it's been the decision making tonight that has let Liverpool down yeah it has it has because they've got the players on the pitch but again you know, people will say those chances Nunez in the first half they were unlucky with Elliot hitting the crossbar and post and then Salah with a half chance but they haven't created loads in this second half this might be the most significant defeat of the season for Jurgen Klopp and his team. 2-0 to Leverkusen in Germany. It's not going very well for the Europa League teams tonight from the Premier League. Aston Villa holding on to an advantage. Leverkusen beating West Ham 2-0 here. Liverpool under the cosh, under the pump. 3-0 to Atalanta. Into the box they come, Liverpool. Maybe one last chance from a corner. They've got a deflection. Well, can the captain, Virgil van Dijk, step up <coughs> and head them? A lifeline. Here is the corner to be taken by Andy Robertson. Far side, the left. Anfield starting to empty as the ball goes in towards Van Dijk, who heads it into the air. It drops inside the box. No one takes charge. Canate is there too. Eventually, it's cleared by the Atalanta defence. We've played 92 minutes and 35 seconds on Talk Sport. Here is Saboschlai, weaving his way into a shooting position. Sends it over the top of the defence instead. Taken down by Jota. He then brings it on. Edge of the box is Diaz. Good little touch. Then tries to weave his way in field, but he gets involved in traffic. They almost get it cleared, then do get it clear, and then it's run up towards the halfway line, and Keller has to come out quickly to ensure that there's no further problems. The referee is going to stop the game here. He looks as if he's going to blow the full-time whistle. There it is. It's victory for Atalanta. Atalanta send a shiver down the Anfield spine. Their players drop to the floor. They look to the heavens. They know that this is a fabulous and significant victory. It's a huge victory. It's a good job that Liverpool have recent history with Atalanta at their place because otherwise this result might send a few into absolute panic. The big favourites for the Europa League have lost the first leg of the quarter-final and not just lost it, they've been thrashed. 3-0 at home, their first defeat in over a year in this stadium. Whether it goes down to team selection, shot selection, decision-making of any kind, this is a stinger of a result. It's the first defeat at Anfield since Real Madrid came here and beat them. But it is a massive, massive defeat which Liverpool are going to struggle to overturn in a week's time in Bergamo. Goals from Skamaka twice and Pasalic with seven minutes to go have really put Jurgen Klopp's team to the sword. They made six changes tonight. It didn't work. They've been beaten at home by three goals to nil. Nobody, nobody, nobody expected this. The overwhelming favourites for the Europa League have been outclassed at home. There were no flags in the cop end tonight. It was a protest against season ticket price increases. And after tonight's performance, they'll be asking for a price reduction. What a night for Ledea. The team known as the Goddess are in absolute heaven. Jurgen Klopp was meant to be leaving Liverpool with a trophy in his hands. But after the disappointment at Old Trafford at the weekend and an abject result tonight, he could be departing Anfield 
with his tail between his legs. Incredible. Dean Ashton, what do you make of that? I'm shocked because you just don't expect that sort of performance, especially here at Anfield from Liverpool, where they never even felt as if there was that that genuine feeling that they were going to score towards the end. Normally, you're expecting a, 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 a rip-roaring end, you know, shots going in at the opposition. There just wasn't, there wasn't that. Too many times, like Sam said, the decision-making was poor. Is that down to fatigue is that down to you know player selection or even you know players coming back from injury it does take you a few games a few weeks to get back into your into your stride and get your quality back either way let's give a lot of praise to Gasparino and this Atalanta team because he got it spot on in the way they've set up they've been brave in the way that when they have won the ball back the amount of players that they've got forward they've sensed the weaknesses in the Liverpool side down the sides and they took full, full advantage of it. And at this point in time, Atalanta's players celebrating in front of the Nerazzurri, their fans in black and blue, who have come here to Anfield where they won back in 2020 in front of nobody because of the closed doors due to COVID. Now they can celebrate the moment. Now they can soak it in. I've got to say, it wasn't a usual Liverpool tonight. It wasn't a usual Anfield tonight. And as you mentioned, Dean, you never got that sense in the closing stages that the Late Late Show that they've had so often Liverpool was going to come. I don't know what to blame it on this evening. You mentioned the changes, but when you look at the carelessness with which Liverpool gave the ball away for the goals, you think about... The concentration being completely absent, sleeping for the second goal for Skamaka, by the way. Wonderful finish. West Ham fans will be wondering, where on earth was this guy at the London Stadium? Because the second goal was a side foot with the left foot, his bad foot, on the half volley as he runs through on goal. And he had ice in his veins to make it too. But then the third goal, given away cheaply, possession by Zobosly this time, once again. And the numbers forward and the ease with which the runs were made for midfield, the passes were found and the shots were got off at Kelleher is something that Jurgen Klopp surely has to address. They've, if you like, run the risk far too often in their games this season and tonight they were punished for it. They were, but you expect them still to score goals. You expect, you know, if, if Atalanta were going to win this game, it was going to be a 3-2 or or a 2-1. You, you didn't expect this scoreline. I, I certainly didn't because they carry such a threat, Liverpool. And they were so disappointing, especially in the second half, not to create any golden, golden opportunities. And Musa made a couple of decent saves, but nothing where he was properly stretched in that second half. I'll be fascinated to see what Jurgen Klopp says after the game or whether he bats it away. But also looking at this Atalanta team and the way they're celebrating in front of their away fans, and rightly so, they should do. I actually think we will see a very different Liverpool starting lineup next week. I would expect Trent Alexander Arnold to be back involved. I would expect possibly Alisson to be back involved. This isn't over. This is definitely not a Liverpool are done, as some teams might be. This leaves it open for something quite special, which we've seen from Liverpool. Yeah, it absolutely does, and I agree with that. However, I do also believe that this has a, a stunning effect on the rest of the season for Liverpool, because what it does is it forces them to go there and give absolutely everything in a week's time. And they are in the midst of a title battle too. The Premier League is the one they say that they want over everything and Jurgen Klopp's got a big balancing act to do now he got that balancing act wrong tonight and Atalanta took full advantage I think Dean's absolutely right the credit has got to go to the manager Gian Piero Gasparini who has done an absolutely brilliant job here over eight years of, uh, of stewarding Atalanta and it's absolutely right that those Atalanta fans have their moment in the sun. They are celebrating this victory with gusto away to our left-hand side, and they deserve it. They were tactically spot on. They took advantage of the gaps in the 
weak Liverpool defence, and it has been weak. They've conceded far too many goals they here. They could have scored more. Yeah. And, and, and there could have been a, a greater margin of victory. And if they do have any disappointment tonight, it will be that, that they didn't get more goals. They are lapping it up. Their fans are absolutely enjoying every moment, and you'd still make them favourites, albeit, Dean, you're absolutely right. Just about anything can happen in that second leg, but it places, as you rightly point out, Sam, huge pressure on their other fixtures. Liverpool go to Crystal, excuse me, host Crystal Palace here on Sunday afternoon. Their fans shudder at the thought of Crystal Palace when it comes to a title race. Away at Atalanta, as we know, next Thursday. They are then away at Fulham on the Sunday straight after that. But maybe the energy will go out of them when they head to Goodison Park just a few days later for the Merseyside derby because that is a fixture in which the opposition fighting for their lives at the bottom of the table will be giving absolutely everything. You know, at this point in, in time, people would maybe shudder at playing teams at the top of the table. But that's something they're going to have to contend with. All teams are going to have to contend with in the running. Teams fighting for every single point. Can they get through that period unscathed? Well, I think what this will do is, and Sam's right, it, it feels like a pivotal moment and result for Liverpool's season. Will they wilt away? Will it really affect them? Or will it actually supercharge them into an incredible end to the season? And I'm pretty sure that's how Jurgen Klopp will try and spin it. That this team are capable, which is why I still, you know, I wouldn't rule out at all them coming back in the second leg. They're capable of special things. It didn't happen tonight. They are capable of, of special things, and we've seen that before. But I don't think that this result is one that hasn't been coming. We have Ooh. seen over the course of the last few weeks some mistakes, especially going forward from Liverpool. The the pace of their, their relentless march towards the top of the table was just slowed slightly. They've missed far too many chances. Yes, they've had injuries, which have definitely caused them an issue. And I think sometimes there is that little bit of a sense now that as we've gone into the last few weeks of the season and I just wonder I think I raised it a couple of uh, games ago actually that instead of there being this sort of galvanising effect that's been brought about by the departure of Jurgen Klopp there's also and maybe we're seeing evidence of this now a little bit of fear and tension and anxiety that's yep. crept into the team because they know just how big that perfect send-off would be. Huge chances tonight for both sides. It could have been more. Liverpool, I guess, will cling to the fact that they had a goal ruled out just offside when Mo Salah really should have kept himself on. 